Hello everyone, welcome to the IFM Talks. This is a podcast dedicated to shedding light in the most interesting questions and themes in facilities management, also maintenance management, and is brought to you by the IFM community, which is pretty much a worldwide network of maintenance and facilities management professionals and enthusiasts. If you haven't joined the community, this is the time. So please do, it, it makes uh, perfect sense. And it, I, I'm sure that will add value to you somehow. And I will strongly advise you to apply because we have limited um, vacancies every month. So if you want to join, for example, in November still, um, please don't forget to apply to become a member at IFM. So my name is Liliane. I am a community manager at IFM and I am your host today. With me, I have um, Jerry Dunphy, which is the event director for security, fire and facilities events at Informa Markets EMEA. They are the ones responsible for organizing the very well-known show, Facility Show in London, and uh, it happens every year. So welcome, Jerry. Uh, thank you so much for being here with us today. Hi, Liliana. Yes, you're most welcome. Great to be here. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so we are discussing the return of trade shows uh, in the FM industry today and the importance of trade shows to build a community in person, pretty much. So can you please start by telling me a little bit more about you, about your role at Informa Markets and uh, the whole protection and main management series, which I know that Facility Show is a part of? Yeah, sure. So yeah, hi, I'm Jerry. Um, I've, I've been at... Um... Informa, um, and previously we were, we were UBM um, before we were acquired. Um, I've, I've been uh, at the company for 22 years, would you believe? Um, and during that time, I've worked primarily in the uh, fire safety and uh, security sectors. So um, I've worked in those markets and those shows for um, for two decades. Um, <clears throat> only recently I've... Um, I've so been, you're, uh, you're already a rock star, basically, at the industry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, and, and recently, um, I've um, also been given the um, management of the facilities event, which is um, it's just really, really exciting because you know uh, we'll come on to you later, but there are there are many, many areas in which I think everything connects now between uh, building management, security, fire safety, and everything else. So it's um, yeah, it's an extremely exciting time. Um, <clears throat> just to talk about the the protection and management series itself, so. Um, the shows are kind of, um, they've always been a, in their individual parts. You know, you have IFSEC, which is security, FireX, which is fire safety, Safety and Health Expo, which is on the safety side, and the facility show, which is obviously on the facility side. Um, they've, always, they've always ran at the same time. Um, we've always been very keen to make sure that, you know, the shows have their own identities, that they work for their own audiences. Um, but recently, and probably due, due to COVID and everything else, we've had a lot of time to, to think actually about you know how we want to portray this in the future and, and the way that the markets are going and the way that the audiences are going and the way that the industries are going and the technology and everything else is that we really now see protection management as one event so the benefit for that really for the visitor is that you can come maybe to facility show and be registered for facility show but you have complete access to go and see and witness things for instance in firex or in ifsec so and we're starting to heavily promote you know, things like where we have content or we have features or where we have specific um, exhibitors who would be of interest, for instance, to facilities management, that, you know, there are no barriers. You know, it's access all areas. Go go to these shows, seek out other bits of information, other pieces of, of expertise, go and go and witness these seminars in areas that are fundamentally of interest to your, to your profession. Um, just because they're in an area which is fire doesn't mean to say it's not for you anymore. So, you know, that's really what we're trying to do. In a way, we're, we're aiming to cross-pollinate our visiting audience more and more than we did before. So the ability to actually put on effectively what is now one event of multiple different layers is really compelling and really intriguing. And we're hoping that the, uh, the visitors will understand that and they'll see more and more crossover between the events. So, you know, as I said, just to reiterate, you may register for facility show, but it doesn't stop there. Please move around, see the other bits, and hopefully you'll have a really, really fulfilling and rewarding time when you're there. Because like I said, you'll see people and experts and guidance and everything else across a multiple range of areas that are all relevant to your professional daily life. And the thing is that more and more we talk about integrating different systems, you know, 
um, adopting new solutions so it can even you know help you uh, broaden your horizons you go after something but you end up finding other kind of solutions that you didn't even know that existed probably so it's also a, a way of getting in touch with other things right that uh, probably were not in your mind when you decided to register to the event but you end up finding them there anyway Precisely, yeah, and you, you know we have a, a, a smart buildings area as well in facilities, which I know has been a very popular feature for the last couple of years. But you know you've got to remember as well that some of that technology in there would actually probably come from security. So mm -hmm. if you're talking about you know access control, or you're talking about video surveillance, or video analytics, or intruder detection, that would all form part of a building management system now in a smart building. And you know the beauty of our combination of events means that that technology is also available for you to see and understand and witness how it would help you to actually manage your building as part mm -hmm. of a network system. So it's kind of all coming together in a very, you know, sweet way. That means that, you know, what we have on offer is, is, is hopefully the entire range of, of what a facilities professional would require to make their, their asset run on a sustainable, profitable, efficient level. Perfect. Uh, you were telling me about COVID and how you had time to rethink the events. We all know that the industry events took a hard hit with the pandemic, so a lot of digital options came up. We even thought that it was possible to replace uh, in-person events uh, with the digital events. But apparently, industry events and trade shows are coming back stronger. As you said, you had time to rethink and improve them. So what do you think about this? Why is it still important for facility managers and other professionals okay, to still attend in-person events? Why is, it for, is it, why is it important to go? I think um, you know, we've, we've considered this at length because we've had a lot of time to sit and think, but um, it's a basic human fundamental need um, to actually meet with other human beings in an environment which is conducive for collaboration and partnership. You know? And I think something that we may have took for granted as organizers pre-COVID was that, you know, people just turn up and they mix around and they collaborate and they meet with, you know, colleagues and they network and they, they take in all the, all the sessions and everything else. But COVID has really allowed us to focus upon the human aspect of people attending trade shows. Why do people come to trade shows? You know, if you're a facilities professional, you are in a culture and environment of like-minded people. So the, the ability for us to actually create an environment where you can all come together as, as one group, as a tribe almost, to come together to talk about your professional challenges, meet with suppliers, hear some seminars on, on upskilling and new technology and sustainability, and all do it under the auspices of this is you, this is your group, this is your environment, this is your culture. You can't replicate that digitally. You can't sit on Zoom calls and have that experience. You can't go for a coffee with people that you haven't seen for a couple of years. You know, you can't go for a drinks reception afterwards. You can't go for a breakfast briefing. You know, it's that fundamental need for people being back together, and people being social animals. And it's really, COVID has really brought that sensibility out. And it's really proved to us that what we need to do is to create these experiences that are really immersive, they're really collaborative, the way you can connect with people, and see people, you know, hug people, all that sort of stuff, because that's what it's all about. And we've discovered that. And, and being, you know, stopped for doing that for two years, I think really created a desire for people to, to want to come back together. And we need to keep maintaining that, that level of, of ambition. Yeah, really nice answer. Totally agree. I think collaboration is the key word there. Uh, it's a little bit... Um, it's a little bit, no, it's actually very similar to what we are doing at the IFM community, for example. So we want to bring together like-minded people, you know, make these people share experiences, share knowledge. And our community in this case is virtual. But we know yes. that what brings people together is when we organize events, when we organize meetups, so when they actually meet in person. And then virtually, the relationship keeps de developing, keeps evolving. But Absolutely. Yes, it's completely different when people come together in the same place. Absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the virtual thing and the digital uh, aspect for us was, was fundamentally important during COVID because, um, you know, for us, as you say, we, we were really hard hit. I think probably the events industry and the travel industry were the ones that were really hardest hit because, yeah. you know, our, our, our fundamental reason for existing is to bring people together, as many relevant people as possible together in one space over three days. So we had to pivot really, really quickly and consider how we were going to 
stay relevant almost stay people stay in people's consciousness you know that we're, we're still going to be here when it when it finishes and the best way we could do that was digitally and we, we did notice over the period that you know when we were doing things like webinars or training sessions or networking sessions or even virtual events you know we did try virtual events um and we realized that you know you can't replicate the live thing but you can do th thought leadership you can do networking sessions you can do training you can do all of these other bits and pieces and and the one thing that COVID did it gave us another layer of of opportunity to actually add another angle to what we provide as as a organization that connects people you know the digital virtual space gave us something else to focus on which we've now added to the live experience mm -hmm. that means that that you know we're suddenly not going to stop doing it all the best things that worked, all the things that we saw that were really effective digitally we carry on doing so we will continue doing the webinars we'll continue doing panel discussions all the meet and greets all of that stuff because it's convenient for people as well you know the, the shows exactly. are only three days a year you know the shows are three days a year you can keep working on keep going. Going up. yeah true yeah. sure. really okay we're, we're stepping stones across these industries all year round you know we keep them we keep all these people engaged and rather than having to wait on a on a three-day opportunity we can do it across the year so okay. that, that's been the, the the biggest plus of all of it is that and that's great because that's related actually to my next question which is pretty much how do you see the future uh, of industry events so uh, how are you the companies behind these events preparing for it and including the digital experience so i think it's pretty much related to what you were saying. And more than just um, looking at how to integrate digital is also how to answer the sustainability challenges. So how are you preparing the future for trade shows with these two big questions that we have today in mind? Um, yeah, the sustainability one is, um, is relatively uh, a straightforward um, tactical objective um, for us. As in former, we, we have a major, major push now on embracing sustainability as a key element of why you would want to do business with us um, as an organization. Um, and sustainability for us, it's, it's, a, it's a challenge because exhibitions are, by their nature, very wasteful um, exactly. environments. You know, they're very temporary things. You know, in the bad old days, people would just come along and build these very big stands of, of MDF and all sorts of um, undesirable materials. Um, and it, it just used to be sent to waste. You know, it was just, you know, there, there wasn't much of a push on recycling. I'm talking maybe about 10, 15 years ago. It has been, you know, much, much better in the last sort of 10 years. But now we're, we're, we're very much dedicated and committed as an organisation to really pushing the sustainability um, message very, very hard indeed. So we are, you know, all the shows now will have a, a, a better stand uh, building programme, which where we want to look at actually what the stands are made of. Um, we will work very, very closely in consultation with the um, stand builders and the customers to make sure that the stands are made of reusable materials. Um, we'd like the stands to be um, made of stuff that could be maybe stored um, and reused over and over and over again. Um, we would also look to sort of suggest that maybe could the stands be stored if you're moving your stand around Europe, let's say, could it be stored in a central hub where you're cutting down on the actual travel costs? We're actually saying to the exhibitors, can you consider how you're getting to the show? Can you actually consider how many people are traveling to the show? Um, we're also saying to them things like, you know, the materials that you bring with you, do you need printed materials anymore? Arguably not. Could we start using, you've probably seen QR codes are everywhere now in, in exhibitions, yeah. because you can get the information across where, where you would have handed out a brochure in the past, you can now direct them to your to your website. Um, so that's just a flavor of, of, of what we're looking to do. It's, it's, it's that kind of microscopic consultation level with the exhibitor and the contractor to see how can we do this to minimize the waste is, is hugely important from that point of view. And then from our, from our side, we are looking at things like the flooring, we're looking at things like the lighting, um, the venues that we use. So it's interesting that um, Excel in London um, has achieved a carbon neutral status. So for us to be able to host um, sustainable stands in a venue which is aligned to our objectives is very, very important. Um, and it means that, you know, in, in terms of the environmental impact that we're making, um, we're hoping it's going to be quite considerable. And if you think that Informa is the biggest organiser of events in the world, to have this as our key um, element of what we're doing, I think it will make an impact and it will make a difference. Definitely. So from, from that side, yeah, um, the sustainability message and, and people will see it. It's going to be very, very front and centre of all the messaging. When you come on site, you'll see it. We'll explain to you why certain things are, are as they are. You know, if there's an area of the floor which isn't carpeted, it's not because we're saving money. It's because 
we're looking at the sustainability element. You know, in the bad old days, there used to be like, there was a, a myth that, you know, we used to we used to send 13 miles of carpet to landfill, you know, and stuff like that. Whereas now that all the carpet is recycled, but, you know, if we can get to a point where we're halving that amount, you know, and not using that carpet uh, um, to such a degree anymore, it, it all of it impacts, it all aggregates to a much, much better, more sustainable, cleaner um, environment. Um, the virtual stuff, um, digital stuff, it kind of, it does help that because it means that, you know, again, if we can host something which is online, which means we don't have to actually use a venue, whether it's a hotel or something or anything else, mm -hmm. um, that, that's the alternative, we'll do that. And um, it also means that we're very agile. It means that people don't have to travel, which is hugely important. Um, and it means we probably get to a bigger audience. So as we discovered when we were doing um, various virtual events last year and various um, webinars and training, we were getting visitors and audiences from across the world because it's online. So mm -hmm. again, it's that complementary element between a live event and, and a virtual event. And the combination of the two will, will, will probably bring a much, much better offering. To it both, will you know. enlarge your audience as well. Absolutely, as well. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And, and you know, eventually you might find that that audience might then come to the show because they've actually understood better what we're doing. So mm -hmm. they might think, oh, hang on, I might need to go to the facility show because they have a program on upskilling, they have a program on technology, they have a program on smart building, buildings, they have a program on sustainability. You know, they, they have, you know, how to, how to deal with, you know, a, a green economy. It, it, and then they'll come to it because they'll see it's a worthwhile event, um, event to come to. Yeah, they can first test the value almost and then, yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. So we were talking about digital, which was the challenge that came up with the COVID-19 pandemic. Then we have this new challenge of sustainability, which is a major concern for, you know, all markets, all industries today. Do you foresee any other challenge coming in the future that industry events um, or the, the, the industry of events will need to um, give an answer to? Um, I think just staying... Um, staying relevant and staying in the middle of their markets is really important. Um, we are very aware that, you know, the upcoming generations <coughs> access information and awareness in very different ways. Um, we're also aware that inclusivity of different groups is hugely important. So, you know, we want to make sure that our, our offering is, is attractive enough to up and coming generations of, of younger people. Um, they're going to have their own challenges. They're going to have challenges on training, on upskilling, on, on understanding, you know, the future directions of where they want to go as professionals. So the, the challenge for us is, is probably going to be, eventually will be a demographic one, is because you want to make sure that these groups are fully engaged. They understand that they are part of an environment, part of a culture. Um, and if they do come to events like Facility Show, you know, this is a big show, big, big, you know, big world leading event in facilities. So they're part of that. So I think the, the challenge there is, and it comes back to, to you guys as well, as well as the industry, is to make sure that they feel included, they feel part of this. This is a profession that they need to belong in. So it, it, it's the same across fire and security. You know, there are challenges at the moment in the fire and security industries of finding apprentices, of finding younger people who want to move into those industries as professions. Mm -hmm. So the way we're doing that is to actually communicate back to them and say, look, the security industry, for instance, is an amazing technological environment. You know, you've got this incredible opportunity to work with some, some amazing technology like artificial intelligence or, you know, biometrics or, or, or thermal imaging or, you know, a convergence, integration, all of this stuff, you know, it, it's no longer being up a ladder, sticking a burger alarm on a wall. You know, it's, mm -hmm. not, it's not about that. You know, there are other things. So I think it's incumbent upon us as organisers, but also the industries to engage with, future generations and tell them why these are careers as to what you're doing you know moving into facilities management as a career you know the impact you're going to be having on the environment for instance is going to be immediate you're going to be working in organizations or corporations and buildings that are driving in one direction which is all going to be about sustainability so you're going to get into a profession where that's going to be at the core of what you're doing so it's i think that to me that's the challenge that's an amazing point of view. I think that's definitely the concern of most companies is to, in the end, stay relevant, show the, that they are relevant, not only for yeah. their customers, but also for their future employees, you know, that they are contributing somehow. I think these new generations are very concerned in having an impact. 
Mm. Um, and companies need to show that they can, uh, you know, give them a place uh, to actually have an impact. That's that's a very good point. Okay, so I'm heading to my last question, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, okay, so if I am a facility manager, okay, why should I attend uh, the protection and management series? Um, and then as a, um, a special, you know, add on to this conversation, I will ask you as well some tips and tricks uh, that I should follow if I am uh, a company exhibiting next year in the facility show. Okay, well, why, why they should come, um, it goes back to my original point is, um, you know, we, we have a multiple blend of opportunities and events that are going on at the same time in, in London. You know, London in itself is a major, major destination city. Um, we also, I'm not sure if people are aware, but we've got a brand new um, train now that connects London from west to east um, called the Elizabeth Line. So if mm -hmm. you're an international visitor, for instance, if you land at Heathrow, you can catch the Elizabeth Line train now to Excel, and it takes about 40 minutes direct. So it goes from Heathrow to Excel. So you can come to the show in a really modern, very fast, you know, amazing new bit of, of transport. If you're coming from London, there are stops from uh, Farringdon, King's Cross, Tottenham Court Road, Bond Street, Liverpool Street. Um, to give you an example, so Tottenham Court Road to Excel direct is 13 minutes. So the old problems of it's quite difficult to get to Excel have instantly been removed. Exactly. So we have a brand new train. So that's a really compelling reason. I'm not selling the train, I'm just saying <laughs> a really compelling reason. But um, it's definitely an improvement. Absolutely. It's a major, major improvement. We feel more European now. I know it sounds <laughs> stupid to say, but it feels European. You know, when you go to European events, the connectivity is brilliant. Um, London never quite had it, but now we do. So we're very, very proud of that. But yeah, so if, if you're coming, um, Obviously, you've got a range of, of, of vendors. There's a range of experts there. Um, in, in total, across the series now, we have about 650 to 700 companies exhibiting. Um, it's a great opportunity for them to actually source materials, expertise, and information over three days. Um, I always say with exhibitions, it's probably the best three-day shopping you'll ever have because everything you need is in one place. You know, All the people you need to speak to, all the vendors that you want to talk to. If you've got a problem, a problem with the product and the vendor's there, Go and talk to them. Tell them that this it doesn't work. What what's going on with it? You know. Um, also, from from the smart buildings point of view, we have the smart buildings feature. So that's going to give you a glimpse into how technology is going to impact on on this market in the future. Um, we have a range of seminars as well. So we have seminars on sustainability, upskilling, smart um, smart buildings, uh, the green economy. Um, you know, future proofing your business, recruitment, all of those sorts of things. Um, we're very, very strong in compliance. So, for instance, if you come to FireX, um, all the manufacturers in FireX have third, third party approvals. So, okay. all of their products are absolutely top level. So, you're walking into an environment which is all about fire safety. So, I think, yeah, it's just trying to say to the, the visitor that, as I said, it's access all areas. Your facility show badge will get you anywhere around these shows. You can go to anything you want, it's all free, there's nothing charged. You can go to the seminars, you've got obviously coffees that you have to pay for and stuff like that but you know the information the technology and everything else is free to attend but it's you know if you're a professional in this market you, you have to be there because if not you're you're missing out and you're not going to grow it's, all, it, it's almost like the other way around so there are no reasons not to go <laughs> absolutely there's none if, if, if this is your, your profession and like-minded professionals are all going to it and congregating there collaborating making new partnerships understanding stuff sharing best practice it, it, it's a fundamentally brilliant way to spend your day. So, and it's and it's enjoyable. You know, there's networking. There's there's yeah, after hours. It's very, it's very inspiring. I also find it very inspiring. In the end. Like yeah. you get out of there full with new ideas. You know, with a new, new contacts, vision. new people. Yeah, indeed. Absolutely. So that that really is what it's all about. Um, in terms of tips, um, the one thing that really um is quite frustrating sometimes. Um, <laughs> we offer a huge amount of marketing support. Um across the piece so the you know the, the vendors and the customers should realize that informer is an enormous organization we have huge amounts of resource behind us um, we offer free marketing support and free marketing kits to all the exhibitors um, use everything we send you you know open every email we send you i know you can get deluged with information but if we are sending you marketing information we're sending you marketing toolkits use it also make sure you're making us aware of what you're going to be showing 
So even if you have a launch, I would caution not to wait for the show to launch the product because the audience won't know you're doing it. So create teaser campaigns, let people know that the launch is coming. Send us the information. We'll send it out either on the websites or on the newsletters. Um, it's just, it's trying to build up that pre-show anticipation. And we have all the tools and all the kits and everything there for you is to make sure you do it because our outreach is vast, you know, and we'll send yeah. it to the other markets. You know, if there's something which is particularly of interest, for instance, from the facility show for the FireX audience, we will send it to that group to let them know that there's something of interest in facilities. Similarly, if there's something of interest in IFSEC, the security will let the facilities audience know about that so they can come to it. So just be part of this thing. You know, we, we can send you all these opportunities, all these avenues to go down to promote what you're doing. Use it because it's free. This is all part of the service. You would pay thousands and thousands of pounds for that kind of marketing. So just everything we send you, exhaust it. <laughs> that's my tip. <laughs> that's, that's a very good tip. I think that sometimes... And I work at Marty, so I, I know that sometimes we start preparing trade shows, you know, uh, very close to the date of attendance. Yeah. Uh, and we don't uh, leverage those kinds of opportunities. So it's a very good tip, I can say. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and social media as well, you know, if you've got a very strong social media presence, uh, use it because it creates ripples, you know, it creates... The beauty of social media, again, it's free. You know, there's no... Yeah. You can say, you know... We're, we're a facility show we're doing this and it goes out and we and we then send it out so it all it grows you know like a like a radar it goes and goes and goes so you know use the social media side of it attach yourselves to what we're doing make use of what we send you talk to us tell us what you're doing you know we want to know because if we know what you're doing and it's of interest we send it back out through our marketing that would encourage people to come and see you so That's it's kind really of like nice. a mm -hmm. it's a cyclical arrangement you know you tell us, we tell them, they see you. It's that. No, that's amazing. And there's yeah. definitely a channel that we shouldn't ignore. We are going to the event. You are the ones that have the contact yeah. with people attending the event. So it's a very important channel for sure. Very and much so. Yeah. It's a partnership. We see all of it as a partnership. Exactly. No, that's, that's, that's a good point. Okay, Jerry, is there anything else that uh, we should discuss before uh, coming to the end of this episode? Anything you'd like to add? Um, no, just, you know, uh, thank you for, for your time and giving us the opportunity to, to speak. Um, we, we'd love to see everybody again in, in May next year. Um, you know, we, we're really excited about the connectivity now of, of the venue. Um, you know, we had a really good show this year, but it was the kind of comeback show. Um, mm -hmm. I think next year is going to be the one that we really consolidate on that success and start moving forward. Um, the audience will see... Uh, definite examples of where we're going to cross over between what's going on with the various events um so there will see a lot more information coming through as to what what we're looking to do but but really for them is to treat it now as one event um that you know facilities show is part of one event so um, and please just yeah just just come and visit the other parts and and look at look at what's going on check into the seminars and you know across the across the board and the other shows because i think they'll find there's lots of stuff of interest it's like basically taking advantage of everything that is going on and not yeah. only the trade show itself. Absolutely. Yeah. It's all oh, there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Jerry, for You're being welcome. with me today. And thank you for everyone. Thank you, everyone, that were listening to this conversation as well. If you enjoy it, make sure you join the community and you stay tuned for the next episodes. Again, Jerry, thank you so much for the tips. This was a great conversation. Uh, You're hopefully, welcome. I'll see you soon as well. Yeah.